Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in mindset, weight loss, business, and more. Learn our top tips so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, feel unstoppable, unshakable, and unbreakable. He's a public speaker, best-selling author, broadcaster, and coach, best known for his highly successful Micro to Millions program, which is why I wanted to speak to him, being the author of Stepping Beyond Intention and Do It With Dan and Beyond Success Podcast completely self-made. He's spent decades perfecting his world-class coaching after receiving a late diagnosis of Asperger's and experiencing what can only be described as life-shattering trauma at just the age of 20. I was so impressed with your story about how you spent the next seven years of just struggling to keep these events from spilling into every area of your life. And that way you built a system. And I want to talk to you about how hard that was and suicidal thoughts and everything to transform your life from misery to celebration. I love those kinds of stories. So please welcome to the podcast, bestselling author. And he's been featured in Wall Street Journal of Master Success. Market Watch, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Dan Mangena, Mangena. Welcome. You had it right podcast. first. You did it. You did it the first time. <laughs> then you doubted yourself. Mangena. You had All right. It. You All had right. It. Thank you. I always try to make sure I can pronounce people's names. <laughs> you had it right. Ah, uh, uh, welcome. Because <laughs> I'm trying Thank so you hard. I was struggling. But anyhow, uh, I, all right, love, no, I love your trainings. I love your podcast. I love what you're all about. So let's talk about how my audience can benefit from your brilliance and create three months to financial success. Is that really possible? Yeah. I mean, so one of the things that I, I, I love to bring people back to a remembrance of is that reality isn't an overcomplicated structure for us. The behind the scenes working of it. Yes. The divine coordination of everything is, is immense. We don't have the processing power to, 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 to get that. But the things that we are called to do in order to be in different places in our life isn't all that complicated. It's not easy, but it's right. not that complicated. For example, people speak about being in a healthy relationship. Being in a healthy relationship, if you have a healthy relationship with yourself and you make the conscious decision to be in relationship with someone who also has a healthy relationship with themselves and come together to build something together, that relationship is going to struggle to not be a very healthy relationship. If you want to have a healthy body, if you simply, you can get blood tests, work, blood work done, you can do those funny little biometric machines and find out what your body needs and give your body what it needs, then you're going to have a healthy body. When it comes to money, money is a medium of exchange that we get for exchanging value with people. If you solve somebody's problem or exchange value with them or liberate them from a place of pain, they'll give you money. You do that for more people and you'll have more money. It's not complicated. Yeah. But the things that we need to get over and beyond within ourselves to get to the place where we can make that relationship with ourselves, relationship with another, to take those choices in terms of what we're putting into our body and what we're doing with our body, to go out and put through, go into the effort of actually, you know, solving those problems and liberating people from pain. That becomes this complex soup that we start to make in our head. Yeah. And then we don't end up getting there. Well, I love that answer because it's where we're to be unstoppable, which is one of my favorite topics. We have to get to where we're stopped, where we're stuck. Mm -hmm. What do you think is holding us back? Is it a mindset? Is it mm -hmm. um, your parents? Like, where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. I think everybody's being held back in a different place because we've all had a different journey, right? We're all going to have um, a different thing. But I found going back all the way back to the hermetic teachings, which are like thousands and thousands of years old, I think yeah. before those teachings came forward and gave us more of a framework to understand universal law, to understand the transmutation of energy into physical form or what we now call manifestation 
there are these sort of wavelengths or these areas that need to be covered and taken care of in order for us to move forward. So we've got the spiritual, energetic, emotional side, right? We've got the mental, the beliefs, the internal story side, and we've got the physical action, habit, behavior side. I frame that in something I call the flow funnel, which is a simple framework for understanding how we can start to develop a deliberate relationship with these steps. But anyone that ever is stuck is stuck because one of these places is out, is out of sync. If your habits don't match, then you're not going to get the outcome because everything that we get in our life is as a result of something we've done or not done in time and space. But what we're able to do in time and space as actions we're able to take happen because we have a belief and a narrative and a mental tuning to be able to take the action. We need to know how to do it. We need to know that it needs to be done. And then we need to have the will to do it, which is also a mental faculty. But then we also have to have the spirit, the energy and the emotional space to be able to have the thoughts, to have the beliefs, to have the mindset, to be able to take the action, to be able to do the thing. So I can work as hard as I want, but if I'm working hard with a limiting belief, I'm not going to get the outcome. If I have the belief, but I don't have the spiritual connection or the energetic connection to the outcome, then I'm also not going to get there. I could pray, go to whatever temple, church, mosque, or whatever thing I want to, begging the divine God, Allah, Yahweh, to give me the thing. If I don't have a belief that it's unworthy of it or know how to do it, then I'm not going to be able to do it and I'm not going to get it. And so we need to cover those three bases, what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing in my mind's eye and what I'm doing. I love that because we all want to manifest abundance. We all want to close the gap to financial freedom from where we are right now. And mm -hmm. there's so much fear right now in the world about money. And I want to mm -hmm. know, like, how can we really, is there any other tips you have for us on closing the gap from where we are now mm -hmm. to where we want yeah. to be? Well, I definitely suggest that people hop over to my website. I've got a, a, a quiz that you can take. It's like 10 questions. It literally takes like two, three minutes to do. And it will identify which one of four abundance blocks you're probably experiencing. And then it also gives you some materials on how you can make your way through that. That will start to close the gap a little bit. Because the thing is, is that generally speaking, the blocks that we have are coming in layers. So we'll have like a top layer that's more apparent. And then there'll be a layer underneath that. And then there'll be a layer underneath that. But if we just work with the layers that are in front of us, we can start to close that gap. We're then going to have some positive momentum. We're going to have positive experience that's going to reinforce our will to actually move forward. We're going to have more of a settling in our nervous system because we're actually going to start seeing some results. So I'd say a really good step forward is to take the quiz. Literally, it's completely free. It takes you two minutes to do 10 questions. It'll tell you which of the four blocks you've got. Start working with that and see what happens when you peel those layers away. Is there some deeper healing to do? Uh, is there some deeper learning you can do? And then you can start to move forward for sure. Okay, well, I know we just glossed over your story, but I think your story is so inspiring, Dan. I want to tap a little deeper into your why of why are you mm -hmm. doing this work to help others achieve financial freedom? Mm -hmm. So I was actually burnt trying to help people really young. And so uh, a big part of my journey has actually been overcoming basically a bit of trauma <laughs> PTSD around trying to help people because when I was uh, young like 18 19 years old I started a business that was helping a lot of people I didn't have the right licenses the government came in and took everything away from me that's what happened when I was 20 I was left with absolutely nothing I built back up again and then people stole everything from me and that's when I ended up in a really really dark place and so coming out of that dark place and making my way back up, I managed to create a new life for myself that didn't have other people involved. I had a very, very safe bubble. Small business with just a few people that worked for me, very small circle of friends, more with my family. I traveled. I didn't really get into any community. I had a very small working life. And then what happened is, is that I kept getting smashed over the head with different signs and synchronicities that the journey that I'd been through wasn't just for me. And at first I was like, this is just nonsense, you know, maybe there's like some ego thing going on. And I was really trying to shut it down. And I was really, you know, a lot of people come to this work because they felt empty or, oh, I, you know, I felt a calling and I knew that I wasn't living my purpose. I was living my best life. Like there was nothing, <laughs> like I was really living my best life. I actually didn't want to risk what felt like a very whole life. And then what actually happened was it was the 13th of February, 2018. I was at a meditation retreat in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And for anyone who's familiar with the weather in Santa Fe, New Mexico in February, it was not 
warm. In fact, it was very, very cold. It's about six o'clock in the morning. So I had like three layers on thermal vest. I had the little hot pocket things that you pop that warm up your things. I had them in my yeah. pockets in my hands. And I'm doing this meditation, this walking meditation. And in the middle of this meditation, I had this completely knock myself over the head, full virtual reality, teleported consciousness experience of exactly what my life would look like if I answered the call that I'd been getting for the year and a half, two years leading up to that point. And so, I mean, I came off of that meditation. I shut down my company, walked away from it, shut down the website, left a lot of money on the table. Within a short period of time, I packed up everything in my house, left everything in my brother's garage. I had a backpack, a suitcase and a suit carrier. And I was running around the world using my savings, renting rooms and saying, come, I want to teach you about this stuff. Uh, and that's evolved to what we're getting to do in the world today. Well, I love that because I feel like in life, we always have a choice. Like you had mm -hmm. a choice, you were comfortable, you didn't want to shake things up, you've been burned before, and then mm -hmm. been burned again. So what really, can you tell our audience about how everything is a choice, and mm -hmm. how sometimes it's not the easy choice? Mm -hmm. I think when we, the, there's a principle I teach about called the choice machine. And this can be quite controversial, and I understand that. Because in order to fully accept this, I feel we really have to step into an acceptance of the fact that what we experience as our physical reality, what we experience with our senses is a very, very small piece of reality as a whole. Anyone that wants to see that diagrammatically, if you go on Google and type in an uh, image of the light spectrum or spectrum of light, you'll see that the visible light wave is like this tiny little piece. And then most of the light spectrum most of reality is actually not even engaged with our senses. It's a very, very tiny spectrum. And so some people speak about the soul. Some people speak about uh, higher self. Some people speak about that. But there are more aspects to ourself. Now, I don't assume to know what those aspects are, what they right. mean or what their function is. But we have irrefutable evidence that those things exist. Yeah. Um, I'm currently reading um, Destiny of Souls, for example. Um, it's talking about, you know, this is a hypnotist who goes through, he takes people through hypnotic trance and sees about their time moving between lives and and so on and so forth and, and, and other lifetimes. And I myself have done some training on being able to access different past lives and stuff like that for people in astral work. And so I've got a personal experience and we've got evidential data to support that we're not experiencing the fullness of reality here. But when we look at what actually happens in terms of what is a thought or an idea or a vision in our mind and what shows up in the world, for it to show up, there must be a movement through time and space to meet it. What do I mean by that? I can have a vision in my mind of drinking this water. The vision in my mind of drinking the water doesn't translate into an experience of drinking water unless I move through time and space, pick up the water and drink it, or manage to... Um, compel or request for someone else to give me the water. I will die of thirst sitting here pretending that the vision in my mind is going to lead to something. Right. And so when we look at all the outcomes that we get in our life, a choice is made for me to move through time and space to meet that vision with action so that it becomes a reality. The challenge is, is that so much of the actions that we're taking aren't happening consciously, they're happening unconsciously. Right. And so we don't even recognize how much agency we're actually bringing to the table of moving thought into form because it's just happening at the unconscious level. And so the choice machine invites us to consider that everything that's in our life is a conscious or unconscious choice. Now, the reason why this gets um, um, upsetting for people is, well, I didn't make the choice to be sexually abused. I didn't make the choice for my parents to die, for my family yeah. member to die, for this to happen or for that to happen. But the, the thing is, is that something being chosen doesn't mean it was desired. And this is an unfortunate aspect of the way that reality works. I just need to be open to it. That's all. And part and parcel, I think, of our evolution as humans is going to be coming into a deeper recognition of this. Yeah. coming into a deeper level of compassion for what we have created and what we will create. And also I believe coming into an understanding of the fact that all of these things that we are so caught up in as being challenging, wrong, bad parts of our experience in the grander scheme of things, whilst sad, unfortunate, painful, and awful from this level, this level is such a tiny aspect of everything I think it's going to take some time for us to evolve to get to the point where we can see everything from a, a wider perspective.
Wow, that is deep. I love this. Your vision, having a vision, having a choice, mm -hmm. and becoming conscious, and all the subconscious stuff that's holding us back. I feel like this is so needed right now in the world, in these uncertain times, how we can be unstoppable and push past the subconscious fears. So I know you were talking mm -hmm. about your website. I know it's fantastic. You have a lot of free information on there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of stuff on there for people. Okay, so where can you find more of Dan Mangena? Dreamwithdan.com. Dreamwithdan.com. I love Easy it. to remember. All right. Well, I will see you there. And thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming, a whole CEO of Lisa G. After over 20 years helping people lose weight and get fit, I'm so excited to announce that I found the missing link with my coaching. Message me if you want to learn how to look better, feel better, and go faster with a master. Lisa G at lisagfit.com.